What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades. Today we're featuring another product from Columbia River Knife and Tool. This is part of their Ruger lineup for Ruger firearms and what we've got here is the Going Heavy model R1801 that is the full size extremely large ridiculously big version of this knife and I want to say guys um, I know you hear in the background there kitty cat meowing that is my new kitten and he will not shut up he's having a hard time uh, new in the house so we're just gonna have to forgive him for that let's set this uh, Ruger down here this Ruger going heavy from Columbia River real quick we're gonna talk about it a little bit uh, this is a Bill Harsey design for Columbia River knife and tools and like I said, is part of the Ruger uh, product line. There's multiple models of Ruger knives from Columbia River. And, um, oh my goodness. So uh, we may have to get the cat into this action here, guys. He's a little uh, needy right now. But um, this is a big, big knife, but fear not even after you see how big this knife is um, I think that it is a pretty doggone decent knife and is going to appeal to people uh, and luckily there is a smaller version and when I say smaller version what I mean is normal sized because the smaller version is a three and a half inch blade uh, 7.83 inches overall length so that is pretty much what a lot of people uh, look for in an EDC type of knife as far as size goes. Um, now, uh, I want to do some specs like I typically do at the beginning of this review, uh, but first I want to give you guys sort of a visual uh, idea of how big the knife is, and yeah, there you go, Kitty. You're in the video. Guys, you're just going to have to forgive me on this. Uh, maybe he once he gets used to the house, he won't be so needy uh, because anytime I start talking, he starts meowing. So um, I'm going to do sort of a visual aid here as to how big this knife is. And I want to say that I've had to raise my camera up to do this video uh, because this knife is extremely big. And I'm going to bring in three other knives from my collection that most people would consider to be uh, very large knives. And the first is very well known. It's the Zero Tolerance 0452. Now, this knife is a 4.1 inch bladed knife that is 9 and a uh, fraction inches overall. This is a long knife, and you can see that it pales in comparison length and width just overall scale to this Ruger and the next thing we're going to do we're going to bring in a Boker Plus product and this is the Salmonero Design Stingray and that knife is also a uh, in excess of four inch blade length knife uh, that is over nine inches long. In fact, it is longer than the my god. This is going to be terrible guys I'm sorry. It is longer than the zero tolerance zero four five two um, By just a fraction. It's a, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch longer But again, that's a knife that is much larger than what most people would carry and you can see again It is dwarfed by this knife and we'll set that off and we're gonna bring in uh, the largest knife in my collection and that is another um, Columbia River product and that is the Otanashi Nokian that is a Williams design from Columbia River now this knife is um, supposed to be four and a half inch blade length but is really about four and five eighths inches uh, just blade length and is uh, about ten inches overall guys and you can see again dwarfed by this extremely large Ruger going heavy. Um, so let's knock out some specs. Uh, this knife is a it has a five inch blade length. Um, that's twelve and a half centimeters. And um, I'm afraid this cat's going to stab itself walking around this knife, guys. We may have to stop this video because I can't do any editing. 
Um, the blade stock thickness is 182 thousandths of an inch or 4.6 millimeters. Uh, the blade width is 1.34 inches or 34.2 millimeters. Your handle length six and an eighth inches or 15.5 centimeters uh, handle thickness a uh, pretty heavy weight uh, 746 thousandths of an inch or almost three quarters of an inch um, and that is 18.9 millimeters thick guys you're killing me cat you're killing me buddy come on now uh, where were we at uh, handle width at the widest here at the butt end is uh, 1.58 inches or 40.3 millimeters. Uh, your closed width is not too much wider than just the handle width. As you see, the uh, the blade pretty much fully nests within the handle and uh, is 1.71 inches or 43.5 millimeters. Your overall length, guys, is a reach out there 11 and 1 8 inch or 28 centimeters. Uh, stop pin diameter, pretty stout at uh, 230 thousandths of an inch or 5.9 millimeters. Behind the edge thickness, guys, uh, for a knife with um, a blade stock thickness of 182 thousandths or 4.6 millimeters is not that bad. Um, it does have a fairly high flat grind. Uh, and I got, I averaged in three different places, I got about 29 thousandths of an inch or 0.74 millimeters your handle to blade ratio is extremely good on this model at 0.81 and your weight is a fairly hefty 10.62 ounces for just the knife or 12.59 ounces including the belt sheath and that's 301 grams or 357 grams respective now this knife does not does not have a pocket clip on it. It is made to carry in this pouch. And we will take a look at this pouch. It is standard sort of semi-rigid foam core, nylon over foam core Velcro pouch. Uh, it does have horizontal and vertical belt loops. And you can see the cat is highly approves of this pouch. Now, we'll move that out of the way since the cat's taking up all the room and We'll go on to materials, guys. I am, again, I apologize. I'm a little out of whack here with a cat on the table here. Um, he's, he's killing me. It's his first day in the house. So, uh, let's go on to materials for your blade stock. Uh, you are in HCR 13 MOV, which is a mid-grade Chinese stainless. Uh, you're going to expect decent wear resistance or edge retention out of it, uh, good toughness, and decent to good corrosion resistance depending on the blade finish. In this case, with this stone wash finish, uh, you're going to get good corrosion resistance, much better than if it had a bead blast finish. Now, the handle is aluminum. Uh, it is aluminum. It is hard coat anodized in a moderately textured black hard coat anodizing that is over a very substantial uh, inset steel liner lock and you can see how thick that is. Um, it is, I think I measured it, it's 2.3 millimeters thick, that stock for that liner lock. Uh, even compared to the 4.6 millimeter blade stock, you can see it's a substantial liner lock. Um, and then your small hardware is stainless, of course. Uh, you've got a matching uh, aluminum hard coat uh, anodized backspacer here. Uh, again, stainless as machined hardware. Now, um, the fit and finish on it. Guys, we'll go to the blade here. Again, it does have a stone wash finish. Um, it is very well done. It's very attractive. It's very smooth. It should be great for corrosion resistance. Uh, it is attractive while still being, being utilitarian. Um, the blade grinds. You see you have a flat saber grind on this drop point. A sort of um, spear pointy drop point uh, with a fine tip here uh, a nice swedge on it that is attractive uh, this this blade design this pointy drop point is Bill Harsey all over the place guys 
if you're familiar with his design language, uh, you know that he uses that aggressive drop point design quite a bit in his designs. Uh, you've got some large uh, sort of oversized but fit to scale thumb studs that are textured on the camp end of them, uh, equal size on both sides, ambidextrous. You do have some, some finely cut, not quite as aggressive as Spyderco's PM2 jimping, but good finely cut jimping. This is very decent jimping, guys. Um, you know, everything, the edge grind is even. The only thing that I will give it, no sharpening choil. So resharpening, you're going to be sharpening straight into the plunge grind. Uh, it is a fairly abrupt plunge grind. So you should be able to do that uh, fairly cleanly if you take some care but I would have preferred to see a sharpening choil there. Uh, that would be a great improvement to a, what is otherwise a fantastic blade design. Utilitarian, uh, yet aggressive at the same time. Um, it's a good looking design, guys. I, I really like it. Um, now you go into the fit and finish on the handle. The machining on the aluminum scales is perfect there's no machining marks uh, or at least none that you can see under the heavy uh, hard coat anodized uh, coating on it this is a deeply machined you can see a very deeply machined pattern on it uh, it is aggressive while not having any sharp edges on it it gives a lot of deep texture guys uh, for great grip whether you are barehanded or gloved uh, this is a fantastic large knife to use if you are wearing gloves uh, but the fit and finish on the scales is pretty good all the hardware the fit and finish is good um, there's no gapping or fitment issues in the backspacer here uh, it, everything fit and finish wise guys is good and again no pocket clip uh, you see that even on the lock side here they've done a hole pattern a progressively sized hole pattern uh, in the liner itself so in effect it is weight relieved guys uh, and matching up to the the circular through milled pattern on the handle very aesthetically pleasing it gives you uh, some weight relief from that liner uh, even though you're still at you know ten and a half ounces for this knife guys it is very large and you do get some weight from that but fit and finish wise I've got no complaints uh, as far as Columbia River goes I would consider this to be one of the better uh, jobs of fit and finish uh, across the different Columbia River models that I have taken a look at or own personally. Very good job here, guys. Now, um, the next thing is action. The first thing I want to talk about is the bearing surface, the bushings, and they are white nylon washers. They do have a large diameter, so a large surface contact area. Uh, these have had a drop of oil put on them, but nothing else. It has not been disassembled and cleaned. It is very good nylon washer smooth, guys. Um, it's it's not a flicking tool, although I'm having, you know, I can do it, but maybe not here in front of the camera. I, I can't get it in front of the camera, guys. It's just too confined to space uh, to be swinging that big blade around. But it is smooth for nylon washers. Um, and they are wide diameter washers. You got plenty of contact surface there as far as the clamping of the pivot. Uh, there's absolutely no play in any direction on this. The lockup is superb and heavily um, built and strong. Uh, it just the action really, guys, is, is actually pretty good. Um, uh, you know, an improvement would be phosphor bronze washers, but it's actually good on the nylon. The centering is perfect on it. Um, again, there's just not a lot I can fault this knife on, guys. Um, the the material is decent. The fit and finish is good. Um, the action is, you know, good to great for what it is. Um, really? nothing to fault it on so far but let's go to ergos and utility use now as far as the blade goes 
I think that this um, design, this um, stylized design of a drop point is fairly aggressive. It is very pointy and pokey guys uh, i think it is more tactical than practical as far as drop points go now that said you'd have to get pretty doggone radical for a drop point to not be a good utilitarian design blade and that holds true in this instance uh, still as pointy and almost spear pointy profiled as it is it's still a drop point guys you've got a great amount of straight flat edge here a nice wide open sweeping belly sweeping all the way up to again a pokey piercy point here um, this is a great great blade design uh, would I want to skin out game with it well no it's, I think it's just too narrow and too aggressive a drop point for that um, would I want to use it for any other type of use utilitarian use tactical or martial use yes uh, it is a fantastic blade design and again one of the highlights of a Bill Harsey design knife. Again, I love his take on aggressive drop point blade profiles. Uh, utility or ergos in the handle, I mean, you're looking at a handle in excess of six inches long. There's plenty of real estate there for every size of hand. You can see in my medium size hands here, uh, let's get this back. You can see this is a large knife with plenty of real estate. Even if I want to choke back on the handle and give myself another inch and three quarters of reach, I can still do that. And there's a nice bird's beak here uh, that is not sharp but is flared wide to give you some grip back there if you do want to choke back on it. You do have a decent, moderately deep uh, finger choil here and the, for, uh, the pivot end, the forward end of the handle. So uh, you get the benefits of that in combination with the ramp here at the on the spine of the blade with the jimping on it. Uh, you get a very firm grip with just the handle design, uh, the jimping and the ramp. And then you take into account the deep, deep, uh, catchy, um sort of mill pattern here on the handle it is fantastic guys great grip great handle design uh works in every grip guys i'm telling you um it's it you know it's just a great handle design so we've got decent materials a great fit and finish for columbia river we've got good to great action for columbia river um, and we've got great ergos and utility use for this knife. So, Baz, uh, what do you think about this knife? You going to recommend it? Well, you know what, guys? I am going to recommend this knife with one um, exception. It's just big. It is too big to, uh, to just carry as an EDC knife. And again, guys... You're looking at a 10 inch knife here with a 4 and 5 eighths inch blade. I would consider this to be EDCable uh, for me. Uh, a 9 inch knife with a 4, 4 and a half inch blade, no problem. Well, within my wheelhouse as far as EDC goes, guys. So, when I tell you that this knife is a little big, for EDC, that's what I mean. Uh, again, it does not have a pocket clip, and if I did not mention it before, neither does the smaller version. They both come with a belt pouch, the same type of belt pouch, and that, that is the way they're intended to be carried. Or, they would make great large pocket or back pocket type of knives. Or they would make a great car knife. Leave it in the pouch, throw it in the glove box in your car, and you've got a well-made, heavy-duty knife there that can be used anytime you need it, regardless of whether you're going to take the monstrous full-size or the normal-size knife. Um, it's a great, great knife for that type of use. Uh, military use. Uh, you know, I don't see this pouch being integrated into modern 
uh, molly or webbed gear but there are plenty of utility pouches out there that are our molly and web type pouches that this knife would fit in uh, take into account you're at ten and a half ounces uh, so if you are rucking a whole load you want to take that weight into account you may want something a little lighter weight um, bug out bag again weight comes in guys you get great size great heavy duty build utilitarian design but it does weigh ten and a half ounces again so keep that in mind so really guys what I'm saying is um, you know I can recommend the design I can recommend the build um, the material the fit and finish everything on it I just can't recommend the size for everybody that's where you have to make your personal decision uh, whether you like this knife at this size maybe the three and a half inch blade version or you don't like it at all because it doesn't have a pocket clip um, a lot of people will never consider carrying a knife in a pouch on their belt um, they just won't do it they're too used to a knife with a pocket clip they're going to carry it in their pocket and I think those are the people that are not going to appreciate this knife for what it is um, for the level of build for the great design they're just going to get stuck up on the size or the lack of pocket clip and you know what I totally understand that um, I feel much the same way even though I very very much appreciate the, the design I am going to say I can recommend it uh, I think that Columbia River did an above average job on this knife and for those of you that are um, familiar with Columbia River you know what I'm talking about uh, there are different levels within their product line and I think this model is a standout model for their product line uh, kudos to them uh, again great design by Bill Harsey a fitting a knife for the Ruger firearms line made by Columbia River and recommended by Bazon Blades now uh, guys again I apologize for the interference from the new cat I think that uh, if I got all the information in this review and it's not too clunky uh, I'm gonna leave the cat in just for shits and giggles um, as always I appreciate you taking the time to watch one of my videos God bless all of you and we will talk to you again